It's the end of the day. She made it. She's okay. She's doing my YouTube. She, yeah, that. Hi everyone, welcome to the workshop. This is how I built my Mark VI. <laughs> is this even funny? I don't even know. So today we're gonna to be talking about the entire process of me making this, this Mark VI suit. My child. Now I documented most of this process. Unfortunately, it is through a lot of pictures and assorted iPhone videos. So I'm gonna be going through all those today and just talking to you about the process while we go through them and explaining what I did. All right, so to start out, I printed the cod piece first. Now this contains the front crotch piece and the iron dumpy. And the reason I did this is because this is the most crucial part when it comes to scaling an Iron Man suit. By that I mean everything, quite literally the entire suit, depends on the sizing of this cod piece. Because if your cod piece is too small, the abs aren't going to fit into it properly, then your torso is not going to fit properly either. If it's too big, it's going to bump around, it's going to look disproportionate, your legs are going to hit it, etc, etc. Getting the cod correctly scaled is crucial to the proportions of your Iron Man suit. So to preface this, I don't have any images in this slideshow of the actual model itself. Um, the model I used was from DO3D, the Mark VI file, with the detachable front chest plate. And then it also came with the inner plating and details as well. This was a heavily modified file by me. I had to slice the entire back to have the separated panels. I had to do the battle damage myself. I had to change a lot of things so this fit the way I wanted it to. So just keep that in mind. I'll probably flash a few pictures up in here while I'm talking about this, but the model uh, came from DO3D and I modified it to be like this. Then I jumped ahead a little bit. I got a little bit ahead of myself and I started printing the helmet. Honestly, in, in the order of things, it kind of makes sense because if you get the cod piece scaled correctly, you're pretty much fine for the rest of the suit as long as everything else is scaled proportionally to the cod piece. Now the other tricky spot is the helmet. Now the helmet can make or break your suit as well, just because you could look like a bobblehead. I wasn't doing this for scaling purposes. I just wanted to build a helmet. So I jumped ahead and I did the helmet. Now this was my baby. Um, I, I love this helmet so much. Um, the file is by Vec3D on Instagram. Check them out on Instagram. I'll have a something here. Um, I sculpted in the battle damage on the faceplate. Uh, I thought doing the battle damage version of this suit would be really, really cool. So that's what I did. Now a lot of these pictures detail the paint process, the weathering process. Essentially what I did was I switched to Duplicolor Metalcast Red. Now this is a beautiful shine as you can see with these two. Um, gives it that really nice deep metallic red that I was looking for um, with the gold base coat. And I didn't clear coat the gold either. I left it as is because I think it looks shinier that way. Um, if you're watching someone like Frankly Built, I know he clear coats his. Uh, it all depends on the kind of look that you're going for. I just prefer the non-clear coated kind. Then I hit it with an airbrush to give it that kind of burned look along the cut. I think it came out pretty good. I, did, or... I think I did okay. <sighs> Then it came to actually fitting it and padding it. So I used this green upholstery foam just because it was the cheapest I could find. Um, you could, you probably should use black, but I was being cheap. So green it is, green is what I have. You'll see it a lot in these, these pictures. It works, you don't see it in the suit, but if you're like an aesthetic person, you should probably go with black. And then motorizing it was actually not too bad. I used the Crashworks kit. Um, Crashworks has an awesome website where they teach you how to motorize a helmet. They have these little 3D printable tools um, based on each design of helmet. So like different marks have different fittings. It teaches you how to do, how to fit these helper arms, how to fit the servos. Um, super, super helpful. Saves you a lot of time. So go check them out as well. I'll have all these links in, in the description. Then I started printing the legs once I got done with my weird little detailing side thing on the helmet. Um, the legs are probably the most important part of the suit, and I'm, I'm gonna probably keep saying that uh, with every single part of the suit, but truly the legs are so important. Coming from somebody who has struggled with mobility in an Iron Man suit, um, struggled with scaling, literally all of that, start with the legs, start with the cod and then the legs. Work your way down before you go up, because if your legs aren't right, it's gonna throw the entire thing off. 
Um, if you can't walk, it's going to be torture. So please, please start with your legs first. I finally took my own advice. Um, I did test fits periodically to make sure that these fit. Um, and then I started working on hinges for the legs. I also did boot covers this time because I've done 3D printed soles one too many times and they really, really hurt. They're not comfortable. Yes, they make it feel more real. If you're walking around a convention for four to five hours at a time, you don't wanna be walking on plastic. Let's just be real here. So I went with boot covers. And then eventually I had both legs printed and I did a test fit and the scale was absolutely perfect. I actually look kind of like a Halo character here, but um, the scale was perfect. Skin tight, uh, which we'll get to later, actually caused me a, little, a few problems. I may have some scars on my legs. Worth it? Now I started working on hinging the knee and so I wanted this to move separately. So I wanted it to tear kind of like like this picture here, the hot toys, where it kind of separates from the leg. It doesn't it doesn't move with either the thigh or the calf. It's its own entity. So I wanted to hinge it separately. So I started working on designing methods to do that. As well as also working on mobility for my ankles because I would like to walk. So uh, I used elastic a lot in, in this uh, process. Elastic and buckles primarily. Um, just to hold the shoe in place, to hold the ankles, uh, the ankle flaps in place as well. Um, and the elastic gave it a ton of mobility, so it was a win-win. I could walk really well. Then I tried it with the thighs. Um, granted, this isn't like a total test fit, a test fit of the legs, because they weren't hinged. But I was pretty, pretty happy with this fitting. Um, I could actually, like, I could run. I could walk up the stairs. That was like a new level. So then I designed these metal hinges. So basically, they were these little strips of metal that I drilled holes into and then fitted with Chicago screws. I actually don't know what the, the name of these screws are. I call them Chicago screws because that's what I've heard. They have many different names. It's a, it's a screw that screws into itself. And so you can basically take it apart, but it also works as a hinge in the situation. And so I fiberglassed and hot glued these to the inside of the leg and then kind of just bent them into shape and they worked pretty well. So then I started printing the torso. Um, one thing I really, really wanted was I wanted the abs to be separated. This way I could bend and I could kind of move around instead of being like, you know, braced standing up straight. I separated the abs in the model just with a boolean uh, and blender. And then I started printing the inner details in the chest. Now the abs are pretty simple. I just kind of hinged them with elastic to the cod. The front panels of the abs were gonna be a little bit more difficult just because I wanted them to be, um, I wanted them to fold over each other, like fold and slide, extend and slide over each other. So I had a different method planned for that which I will go into detail in a little bit. The general fitting was pretty easy and I did a test fit again, it fit really well. Then I had an idea. I went back to the helmet because I noticed that in the first Avengers movie, in the dark, his helmet lights up on the inside. Uh, Shakespeare in the park. So I wanted to add that to my suit. Then came the shoulders. The shoulders were pretty self-explanatory. You can't really do much with them until you have the torso and the arms. So it was just kind of a scale test. Then I found this awesome art corrector file by, I think, Neon Robotnik on Instagram. I hope I'm saying that right. Once again, we'll put them up here. I used the face of their art reactor for this and then designed a custom holder. That way I could screw the art reactor in and out of the suit um, and then, you know, create tiers of these NeoPixel rings so it was super, super bright. And I have a resin printer, so I got to print this in resin and it's super, super pretty. I know I keep saying super, but it was a really, really cool piece of this suit. I also may have laser engraved the triangle piece out of acrylic um, and I didn't realize my laser engraver couldn't handle it and it like straight up went through. Then I started printing the biceps, pretty self-explanatory again, just testing for scale, um, testing things taped together, just seeing how things like interacted. So then I got to one of the more complicated parts of building the suit. I wanted all of the back flaps to move and like, do things like they did in the movie. And so part of the challenge was trying to figure out how to motorize these because this hasn't really been done. I don't want to say before, but it hasn't been done like commonly. So I had to design like a whole mechanism for these, these, uh, these back flaps to move in the way that I wanted them to and the traps to slide and like lift up. So I played around with a ton of different versions. Um, some of them didn't fit into the suit. Um, they sat too deep and they would be stabbing me in my shoulders. So I had no choice but to go with some alternatives. I did a lot of prototyping. A lot of my time was spent prototyping and just working on code. Once I was feeling up to it, I did a test fit of like 90% of the whole suit. 
it fit like a glove. But this is my fifth Iron Man suit that I've built. Nothing has ever fit this well before. I think I've finally found the perfect scale. Like this was, this was like a golden moment for me. I've never been more proud of a suit than in this picture. Uh, mobility was still pretty tough because things were taped together, but like I was gonna fix that anyway, so I wasn't too upset about it. Then it was just a lot of like figuring out placement of parts, um, how things were gonna attach to each other, how things looked when they were like one solid part, you know, like a whole Iron Man suit. And then I dove straight back into prototyping. This was this this was pretty pretty challenging. I would say this was probably one of the harder things I've done in this build was trying to find a way to make these trap mechanisms slide. And you can kind of see here, they do kind of slide a little bit, but the mechanism was never perfected. I'm currently working on upgrading the suit uh, as we speak for another convention in a couple months. Um, hopefully I'll have an update video for you guys as well um, when that hits, um, because I plan on making the suit fully functional and doing what I couldn't do during my con crunch. As of right now, this is the state that it's in. It does slide. And the uh, missiles do do flip up. Ta-da! It's not as good as I want it to be, so we're gonna work on it. Um, I spent a lot of time prototyping. I had a really, really good method. Um, I really liked that it lifted straight up. Um, I just didn't have enough room, like I said before. I went through a lot of prototypes. Like, a lot of prototypes. Lots of time went into this. Uh, then we went back to the abs. So, like I said, I wanted them to kind of like slide over each other and extend. Um, I did this with these little steel rods that I cut down to size and then glued to these little nibs that went through like channels in these in these uh, these platforms. You could probably see them better in the picture than I am explaining it, but they they were like just basically tracks that I designed. They would move left and right, up and down. Um, it gave me a lot more mobility. And then I also designed these little flaps to sit um, to attach to the abs so that way when they extended, you didn't see any gapage. Then when I finally printed the forearms, I designed this little like rotating wrist mechanism. And this was done with ball bearings and just a couple of cylinders with tracks in them. Um, pretty simple method, just glued it in place. And I had this rotating wrist that was really, really awesome for mobility um, until it got stuck with the paint. I would recommend taking it apart before you paint and then putting it back in. So then I was able to do a full test fit of the arm. Um, as you can see, it looks a little long. Um, this ended up being a problem at the convention. It actually cut off my circulation on my thumb uh, and I couldn't feel it for a few months. Make sure your arms are not too long because they will push on your hands and you won't be able to wear your gloves properly. Now, obviously this was before I added the forearm missiles. Um, I was not able to get the forearm missiles working for the convention, which I'm working on now for WonderCon. I also double jointed these arms, which I highly recommend doing on Iron Man suits. One joint tends to not be enough because in order to get that at least a 90 degree bend, you have to have a double joint. Unless you're using elastic. I don't tend to use elastic in my joints. I just don't, I just don't like to use elastic. But there was a joint inside of the actual forearm itself and then a joint where the bicep meets the elbow, which was done with purse latch magnets. So it has a free rotation. Then I was also playing around with joint covers, um, which I know I keep saying this. I'm also trying to work on for WonderCon. Um, this was done with dragon skin and tinted with gold mica powders. The idea was there, um, I just couldn't figure out how to cast it in a way that I could just slide up my arm. It was kind of open in the back and it just didn't look good. I ended up using TPU for the time at C2E2 when I wore the suit for the first time, but it wasn't flexible enough. I couldn't really bend my arm as much as I wanted to, but it was a placeholder. And then I used um, Walsh 3D's No BS Hand. The fingers are all the same, so you don't have to worry about print orientation like DO 3D. It, they, it makes it super easy to print, and they also print really fast. So I used those hands, and I got the scale perfect this time. They quite literally fit like a glove. <laughs> and then I designed a neck mechanism that was like, I don't know, I, people on Instagram love this thing. It was um, a neck with like tears. So it kind of like extended, kind of like the abs, it extended and uh, extended and uh, slid into itself. And it was just elastic, but it worked really well. It looked really nice. And then I started designing the actual missile pods for the forearms. Um, this was a lot of blender work and just like designing, modeling. The hard part was trying to figure out how they opened up, which I didn't quite figure out either, but I at least had the squares that fit the forearms. So it, it looked like they opened. I mean like fake it till you make it, right? Continuing with the inner details theme, I found these inner details for boots on the RPF actually made by the Digital Armory on Instagram uh, way, way, way long ago. Um, they were actually for the flight test boots. 
So I took those and I sized them for my Mark VI calves, shins, like the back part. When the flap opened, you would see details instead of just my leg. So it was, it kind of added like a sense of realism. And as you can see, things were starting to come together. Um, the scale was perfect. Again, it was just making sure everything fit together, uh, sanding, painting, and mechanizing things. Then I programmed in this LCD screen. Um, the idea is that it would read the, the read the Jarvis protocols that I programmed in on the chest. It would sit like right around here. And so when I did the startup system, you would be able to see the code running through like um, initializing missiles, initializing blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is something I had to skip just because of con crunch, but the code is still there. I'm gonna utilize this again for WonderCon because I think it's really cool. I just, I, I don't know. I like when things feel real. I feel like an Iron Man suit would have some sort of screen um, or, you know, heads up display like it does in the movies. So then it came to sanding and painting everything. And this was just like, you know, sanding things with different grits um, over and over and over again. You know, I started with 80 grit. I hit it with filler primer, repeat with like 120, hit it with filler primer again, Bondo, sand it again, 220, sand it again. Some parts, because I was in such a hurry, didn't really get that much of a sanding job, which is why there's some layer lines on some of my suit. And I really don't like it. I'll be repainting a lot of the suit for WonderCon um, because I'm just not happy with the paint job that I did or the sanding job that I did. During this, I fitted the chest with this metal bar system to kind of keep it up because the traps were loose. They weren't gonna hold any weight. Um, so I needed something to hold it, hold the suit up on my body as well as prevent the traps from collapsing. Now this also hinged open, so it kind of cracked open and I could lift it over my head. Well, that was the idea at least. It like scalps me every time I take it on and put it off. Huh? Every time I put it on, every time I put it on and take it off, there we go. So that's something I'll be upgrading, but it worked for the time. Um, I did it on previous suits as well. Um, the thing is that this suit is just so form fitting that it like, it takes my head off every time. And then, like I said, was just a lot of rigging with um, Velcro and elastic and buckles, making sure that things sat well together, looked realistic. And then for some psycho reason, I started going after the electronics. Um, I designed these little like wrist cuffs that fit inside the forearms that hold all these motors in there. I was trying to make the forearms work. All the while I was trying to keep up with painting because you can't have an Iron Man suit if it's not painted. You're not gonna wear that at a convention. Like who wants to see Plastic Man? I mean, I know it's plastic, but I don't, I don't want people to know it's plastic, you know? So this was July 22nd. The convention was in like two weeks and I was in panic mode just cramming all the electronics I could into the suit. I probably, over the entire month of July, I was awake from like 8 a.m. to 3 a.m. every single day, sitting in this very basement, just alone, just working my butt off. I was scrambling to fit motors into my legs, make it so that I could still walk in them. I just wanted things to look cool. I wanted a, a fully motorized suit because what I wanted to do with the Mark 42 in the first place was this. I wanted something to look like it came straight out of the movie. And so I wanted it to have all the bells and whistles because I'm, I'm, I can be crazy sometimes when I have my mind set on something like this. I just kept pushing and pushing to have those motors in there. I did kind of accomplish that. Like you can see here that I motorized some of them. Now, obviously I had some kinks to work out. This is like a premonition of what this, this was like a, a, a preview of what was gonna happen at the convention. My legs got beat up really bad. Out of everything, these abs were beautiful. They worked exactly how I planned. They were shiny, just chef's kiss. I actually ended up reinforcing them with elastic just in case the system that I designed failed for whatever reason. And also to just give it that kind of extra rigidity when I moved just so they didn't look like they were bouncing around on a metal track. And then I finally figured out the chin. So I didn't mention this previously, but the chin was supposed to slide forward and back if you look at this clip right here, you can see that it happens in this one scene with Thor. I've never seen anybody do that besides um, besides Walsh 3D's um, Mark 85 helmet. So I was like, crap, like I wanna do that. So I did. I finally figured it out. I actually used a lot of inspiration from Walsh 3D. Then I also designed these custom hinges for the back flaps, which actually worked pretty well too. Um, I was really proud of myself. Uh, I didn't know I could design mechanisms like this that actually worked pretty well. So this felt like a win to me. Same thing with the traps. I did a lot of testing on these. Then I started designing some missiles as well as fitting some of the electronics to the suit um, and just doing some general tests all together, making sure everything ran smoothly, make sure it had enough power. This is when it started feeling really, really good. 
This is probably one of my favorite clips of the suit, even though it was so unfinished. It just looked really cool. And then most of the suit was painted. I started battle damaging. I brought up my airbrush. I have rub and buff. I just started making it look like it was beat up, just like in the movie, because I think battle damage is like an art form. I think it takes a lot of talent to do it the right way because there's such thing as too little, there's such thing as too much, and hitting that sweet spot takes a lot of skill and a lot of patience. Cable management is so important. Just, just look at the picture. Tell me you don't get a headache. <sighs> I'm, I'm currently working to fix this mess right now. It is awful. I don't know how I put this into the suit and expected myself to wear this thing. So yeah, we were, we were getting close to the finish line. Electronics were a little rough, but like the suit was almost painted. Here's a picture of the inner of the forearms. Um, they didn't quite work the way I wanted them to, but this was how they looked. It was just wide enough for me to fit my arm through, and it fit pretty snugly too. So it was pretty perfect scale-wise. The electronics were just questionable. Then once again, I was weathering, I was painting, just doing some detail work. Um, this was the in inner details of the chest. Um, you can kind of see them right here. It took a lot of work to paint this thing. I did it all by hand. I didn't feel like taping things off, so. Uh, lots of lots of rub and buff. I did rub and buff on the front for the most part um, and some silver spray paint And then we get to this picture right here This was August 3rd Literally the night before the convention At 1 a.m. The things were it, it, I was baking it. I was doing it. I was almost there And then I did some test fits of the legs fully painted attached to the harness and honestly they, they look pretty good I did some tests just walking around. I tested it with the bodysuit on just to see the color comparison. And I think I, I actually matched the colors pretty well. And then it was just a lot of weathering, just weathering things that I thought looked like crap because there were a lot of layer lines, admittedly. So what I did was I did some strategic battle damaging to hide the really bad parts because towards the end, one of my paint cans actually sprung a leak. And so it was the last paint can I had. So I was just, spraying like a crazy person and there's drips all over the forearm. And so in order to hide this, I just took a, took a file, started scraping, uh, weathering, just getting it done so it looked presentable. I actually spent the morning of scrambling to finish some repairs and then packing up my car and just, I mean, I'm gonna censor it so I don't get demonetized, but I was hauling butt over to C2E2 because I had done it. Was it super functional? No but I did it in the time frame I gave myself, which was an accomplishment in itself. I managed to fit the entire suit into this one crate, minus the torso and the helmet. Yeah, the torso and the helmet. Um, I had to actually wrap this thing in towels in the car to make sure it didn't like just fly around the car and destroy itself. And then I did my first suit up and this was at 3 p.m. I spent the entire morning Saturday trying to fix this thing and make it work. At one point I just had to call time of death and put the thing on. <laughs> and I'll let the video speak for itself. Yeah. Alright, go look in the mirror. I was gonna make sure. Dude, that's actually so, that's actually like pretty decent. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. Oh my <laughs> Dude. Homie knows. What the f Oh my god. Oh my god, my abs, they look like Oh, here. No, I got it. Um, it was, was catching on Velcro. that, oh shoot, I kept adjusting it earlier and getting it right back, but right now, I'm putting the elastic behind, didn't want to stay, it, it looks so good. it's fine. I think it looks great. Yeah, I think it looks fine. That's sick. Dude. <laughs> Close it. Close the helmet. Yeah. Oh my god. I can't, I keep getting caught. <laughs> I, I am very, very proud of this suit. My one gripe is that I gave myself such a short time span um, for something that should have been just months and months of work. Um, this would have been far more enjoyable if I had actually taken my time, which is what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm finally getting to the stuff that I really wanted to do. I'm making it so it's perfect because I want this to be like the suit that I bring to conventions. I want this to be like re-wearable. I don't want to keep building a bunch of suits that I just like throw in closets and stuff. I did it. So when I do upgrades on the suit, I'm going to be doing a detailed video on the electronics because I've been doing a lot of cable management um, and I think it's worth showing. So um, as I upgrade the suit and when I head to WonderCon, I'll probably be doing another video on this um, just because there's so much more to talk about regarding the suit. 
I just wanted to show you the entire process of how this thing came together um, and the problems I faced. Um, just the process and just the way I looked at it and approached it. Hopefully this was helpful to somebody out there. Once again, these are like almost all of the pictures that I took during the process, so um, it's all out there now. If anybody has any questions, like drop me a comment and I'll try my best to help. And I will see you in the workshop. Bye-bye.